So what do you think then? Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you do? No, no. Do you like it? No. No. Okay, well there's there's our review done. So welcome back to A Bus and Beyond and this is a really exciting day because VW have very kindly lent us this ID Buzz for a whole week. So we're going to take it about and we're even taking it to the NEC show to see how we get on with range. We've got lots planned so let's get on with it. So the first job is can we fit a car seat in the ID Buzz? I'm sure we can. But the more annoying thing is getting on, it out. why are we putting the car seat in the Buzz? Because we want to take yeah, but we're going for Ikea. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> we're off to Ikea first. <laughs> yeah. And we probably need to put the seats flat. Let's not do that then. <laughs> I can stay there, we'll do that later. Right, scrap that idea then. We're gonna take Bentley to uh, Lizzie's mum's whilst we go off to Ikea. So let's make sure that Bentley fits in the boot. Nice spin. Thank you. What Wait, do you think of anything there? Not yet. Right, you're gonna jump up on me. Up again. Can you do it? Right, getting He's enticed. like, I can't do go, it. Go, 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 go. Get all the way up. I know, that's quite big actually, isn't it? <laughs> go, go, all the way up. Right, are you ready? And go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Am I gonna have to lift you in? <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Ready? And go! Oh. Yes! <laughs> there we go. Load the room, Bentley. Right. Okay. Let's see it stay there. Stay there. He's in, but it's quite a step up, as you can see. <laughs> it seems to be a bit of a theme. We always seem to come to IKEA with um, the press cars. We did that with the Caddy California as well, but um, yeah, we don't always spend all our time at IKEA, I promise. The lunch is amazing though. <laughs> Meatballs. Meatballs! The parking sensors are going crazy. I can't, they've stopped now typically, but they were going crazy because we were getting close to the barrier here in IKEA. It's um it definitely I think because you sit so far back, it definitely is quite intimidating in tight spaces like this. <laughs> <laughs> We're nearly at the top. God, like that front right corner just looks so close. We're coming to IKEA for some new furniture for the new baby. So uh, yeah, about time we actually got some stuff sorted because We've not even put the back seats down. No, I don't think. No, I think it's all going to fit. Possibly. It's just the bottom bit. It's typical. The, the biggest bit's on the bottom, isn't it? So many bits. At least we fit the octopus in. <laughs> the important bit. The boot is huge. It's massive. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's not but I quite. Think you, can, you can just recline these, which might be enough. But I 
so he might as well go down there. He might as well go down. Yeah. Nice. Nice and flat. Loads of spoon room. Let's have a look from the side. See? Tons Completely flat. Loads nearly, of space. We nearly bought a massive wardrobe, one that was in the clearance bit, so already made up, but that's 216 tall, which is way taller than me. And I, when we when we were at the press launch, I laid in this and I, I just fit in. So we're not going to try and squeeze that in. Maybe we'll use the crafter for that. Yeah, we'll use the crafter. <laughs> so we're just driving through town. Last time we drove this at the press launch, it was absolutely chucking it down. So it's quite nice. You can really tell it's lovely and quiet, especially in town. We've just done some town driving then and it's really, really quiet really peaceful to drive. This one has actually got the bigger wheels fitted. When we drove the one on the press launch, the wheels were the more standard size, which um, we'll have to write on the screen. I can't remember the difference in size. It's something like, these might be 21 inch, they are huge. This is a bit harsher, the ride. It's, um, you, yeah, it's firmer. You definitely get a bit more of a, a rocking back and forth when it goes over some of the bigger bumps, but um, it's still comfortable, it's still fine. It's not crashy in any way, it's just um, just firmer and it's noticeable. Right, time to fit the car seat. I've just let the, these seats slide forwards and backwards, so I'm gonna make sure in the rearmost position they are they can go quite far forward or back it's a really easy lever to get it up and down as well when i put the seat back up it's just this you just pull it and then it comes down super easy these always scare me because they're isofix and you've got these massive bits sticking out the back and it always scares me around paintwork on a car just squeeze this in i mean this is one of the spinny ones this one spins 360 degrees isn't it so look at that look at the how easy it is to see the actual isofix points. Yeah, that's that nice. That is good. That's quite rare. And then just the leg. Oh, in fact, it's fully extended, but it is green. So yeah, fully extended. That's it locked in place. You can see oh, it says green there. So it's all in the isofix, all done. And can good. it spin still? Yeah, Simples. very nice. Easy. I do worry a bit because Harvey's feet go against here. White. <laughs> mm. Well, they do say to fully test them. <laughs> yeah. I need to find, does anyone know actually, if you know of a cover that you can put over the back, uh, let us know in the comments. I don't want it to go on the front. I just want a cover on the back because I want it for our other car. Yeah. At least that fits anyway. Right, well the child seat is in so we are off to pick up the child <laughs> and he's been at nursery i think he's going to like this car It'd be interesting to see what his reaction is so yeah, let's head over to see if he calls it a bus or not because sometimes he he calls a camper van a bowl and we don't know why but he does so it'd be interesting to see if he calls this a bowl and he recognizes it as like a potential camper van for the future oh it drives lovely i love how this drives to try and find our car it's going to be a difficult one it might be different what you look you so see? concerned <laughs> about it what can you see can you see the car yet it's a looking like a camper van no <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What is it? Yeah. Can you have a look? What about this one? Whoa. Do you fancy going in this? Look at that. You fancy going in this? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Should we go for a drive in it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Approved. Dee. What is it? Dee. What is that? What is that? Yeah. He's pointing at all the little pictures, all the little Easter eggs that the van's got. It's so cute. He's saying bowl, isn't he? He's yeah. saying like, 
What do you think this is camper fan? It's exciting, wow. isn't it, Haas? Is that good? Is that good? Those are very good. Are we going to go? Yeah. Yeah. Go for a little drive, shall we, Sweet Pea? Oh, the chair moved back. That <laughs> concerned him. <laughs> oh, forward again. Yeah, I'm, it's got like comfort access. I don't think it really needs it in a van this big. You can get in easily. So I'm actually just turning off that. It's called easy entry, but it's like comfort access thing. Because when you've got a child in a child seat behind you, you don't really want it moving back. And I just don't think it needs it anyway. So what do you think then? Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you do? No, no. Do you like it? No. No. Okay, well there's there's our review done. <laughs> NEC tomorrow and the ID Buzz has got about 70% battery so I need to charge it. We've got a home charger. Uh, the cables are just in this holder in the bottom here and what uh, what I'm using there's a couple there's a home charger so like a three pin plug and then I've got a proper outdoor charger because we've got a Tesla as well so I'll be plugging it into that overnight and we should get a full charge nice and quickly. Right, that's the three pin charger there and then this is the cable for faster chargers so this is a home charger seven kilowatt charger and that end goes in there like so and then thankfully the id buzz is actually positioned quite well for charging at our house because it's on the correct side there we go and you've got your plug, which is where it plugs in, then that's for faster CCS charge, and you take that bit out, but we don't need that at the minute. Unravel your cable, and then plug it in. And that's the contact just clicking in, and there we go, green light, so it is charging. Let's just have a look on the dash, see what it says. So we've got 69% at the minute. Uh, so it's saying, yeah, seven kilowatts charges. 20 miles each hour, seven kilowatts, charging to 100% because we're doing a long journey. At the minute, we've got 160 miles of range. But yeah, we need a bit more than that. We will have to charge uh, before we head back as well from the NEC. So I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that yet. But we will work all that out tomorrow. I need to just share this story because this is brilliant. So we I picked up some milk, two things of milk, a thing of uh, Pepsi Max, and some Pringles. We're having pancakes tonight, so I thought I thought I'd get some milk and stuff from the shop. Anyway, as we were going around the corner, they were on the rear seat and they slid off and were wedged in the sliding door. So I thought I would precariously open this door and get them out. So really carefully, they were right down in the bottom here, down there. So they fell on the floor, rolled underneath the van. That fell on this bit here so it probably be a bit fizzed up and then one of the milks fell down onto the floor as well there's a little bit of a bit of milk there so it's leaking and then i slowly opened it and i thought where's the other milk gone so i was looking this is where i put them i'm thinking oh it must have slid underneath the seat no has it gone under the front there no where on earth? I could, and I thought, where on earth is the, the milk gone? Has it slid over the other side? No. Anyway, it's actually, there's actually a door, uh, uh, like a pocket in the door, and it had hidden there. I thought I'd done some magic trick and lost the milk completely. That had me stumped for a while. I've just come out to check the charge status of the van and look at that on the floor. That's a bit spooky, isn't it? Nice little lighting on the door handles. Then it's quite neat that it has a red light there as you open the door so that traffic can see that you've got the door open but we are at what we're at 
hundred percent says 233 miles. So we shall see how we get on with that tomorrow. So today is going to be a big test for the ID Buzz because we are off to the NEC camping caravan and motorhome show. They always add random words to these things. Anyway, we're off and that's about 160 miles away from home. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Buzz coats with that. We are going to be stopping on the way to top it up with some uh, juice and then on the way back as well. So again, we'll see how it works out with the charging points. Um, but the charging point that we've got in at the moment is about 100 miles away. So it's about eight o'clock in the morning. So it's about rush hour time. So it's going to be interesting to see how we get on and how busy these Instavolt places are. So we shall see. It's not a great start, is it, Sean? No, it's it's already trying to, it's trying to take us, rather than up the M3, it's trying to take us along to Romsey along some smaller roads and I don't know this is the problem with built-in sat nav systems on cars you just never know whether to trust them or not this does have car play but we didn't bring a cable with us because I didn't think I'd need it so it might be a case of Lizzie might have to get her phone out put Google Maps on and just see what that says but I'd be surprised if going Romsey up the A30 is quicker than the M3 but it's always so busy around here at this time what do you do though? Do you leave at like five in the morning to beat the traffic here, but then you sat outside the NEC because it doesn't open till 10? Or do you sit in the traffic? Well, we, we couldn't leave early anyway because we had to drop Harvey off at nursery, so we had no choice. But it's, which way do we go? get this on the back of all these vans it says my next vehicle will be 100% electric but they're all brand new VWs that aren't electric yet whilst we're driving along in an electric VW it comes across a bit like <laughs> oh please go with Eon because although we've not bothered going electric this time we will next time promise <laughs> <laughs> So we've just arrived at Instavolt in Banbury and just trying to work out what sort of range we would get out of this. So we've done 111 miles since we started. Yes, that has taken us nearly three hours. It's been horrific traffic. 111 miles and we have 42% battery left. So what's that work out then, Lizzie? So that's 111 miles divided by 58. 58% is the battery that we've used. Yeah, which gives us 1%, so times that by 100 to get 191 miles. 191 mile full range. Well, 191.3 full range. That's about as we suspected, I think, about 200 miles from a full battery. Assuming that the battery discharges at the same rate all the way through, but who knows really. But yeah, right, let's get plugged in. I've never used these before. So this will be interesting. You've got to authenticate with your card. Let's try it. Beep. They're building loads more chargers over there. Do you have to dance when oh, you're waiting? Authorised. Now what? Select plug. CCS. Connect plug. Oh, it's making some noises. There we go. So it sees, it knows that the battery's got 42% state of charge. And I can hear it starting to whirr. So it's saying 50 minutes to 100%. We don't need to charge to 100%, that's fine. Uh, and it's adding the kilowatts in now. It's doing it at 82 kilowatts. That's not bad actually. To say we've got half a battery, I'll take that. That's not bad then. That's yeah. fairly easy. Yeah, yeah it is, it's fine. 
Right, let's eat. I quite like this little feature where it actually tells you how many miles you get for each minute and how many kilowatts you're getting at the moment. That's quite good, it is topping up quite quite quickly. Sean's just going to get us coffees and me a hot chocolate, so yeah, it's all right really. Quite similar to the Tesla charging points. So this charging place at Banbury's got Costa Coffee just opposite, so Nipton got coffee, but also there's a Greg's down there. For those of you not in the UK, Greg's is absolute fine cuisine of um, they sort of do delicate sausage laced in beautiful layered pastry um, it's not really it's just <laughs> fast food sausage rolls and stuff like that anyway um, very good sausage rolls <laughs> they are yeah they're good sausage rolls but um uh, i'm sure some of you are wondering why we're charging here it with a new journey in any electric car whether that be a tesla or non-tesla teslas obviously have the the beauty of having the supercharger network which um is all integrated beautifully into the system and yeah it, it works really really well for knowing where to charge and how to do your routes and everything like that however that doesn't stop you needing to do a little bit of forward planning on any electric car it's all well and good just doing a journey from a to b the car will work out where you need to charge and um, highlight that to you on the sat nav on m nearly all electric cars but um, if you need to go somewhere and then come back again in the same day it can be a bit trickier also if you like I know that we're going to be coming back around about rush hour so the chargers near the NEC are probably going to be really busy that kind of thing there's also chargers at the NEC but they're slow chargers which is all well and good um, because Yes, you do want a slow charger at the NEC because you don't want to have to come outside and move your car. However, they're o it looks like they're only three kilowatt, which is really, really slow. That's like plugging you into a three pin plug. It's like plugging your car into a three pin plug. So I don't think that would give enough battery to get back either. So I did a bit of planning last night and I reckon charging here, quick top up here. Uh, it's only about 40 miles to the NEC. It says now we've got 137 mile of range. So we'll be able to get 40 miles there, 40 miles back to this point again, and we'll just do another top up to get home. Um, yeah, so it just takes a little bit of planning. If, and, but now that we know that that is the case, if we owned this vehicle, we'd now, you don't have to do any of that planning. You know to, next time we come to the NEC, we just charge here and then charge here on the way back. So it's always the case of that first long journey. The first time you do that long journey, just takes a little bit of planning. So it's still charging at a pretty decent rate, 67 kilowatts. That's that's not bad actually when we're up at 65% state of charge. So I should also mention that we just tapped our card, well our phone with Apple Pay on the charger and it unlocked and charged. They're not all like that. Unfortunately, some of them you require an app, which is just, yeah, it's frustrating. You shouldn't have to download an app for every single one. They should all be like this, where you just tap your card. Boom. And again, with a Tesla, you don't even have to do that. It's all integrated into the actual car. So you just pull up to the superchargers and just unplug straight in. So that's really good as well. So stop charging. Charging canceled. So that's more than enough to get to the NEC and then back here. And then, then what? You see? <laughs> oh, you gotta tap your card again. <laughs> no receipt available for this card. Okay. Are we done? Can we unplug it? <laughs> yes, we can. So we don't know how much that costs. Please authenticate. That's starting again. That's starting again, yeah. Yeah, so let's put this little bit back in. <coughs> well, who knows how much that cost. We'll put it on the screen when we find out on our bank statement. So 
so that's us done at the NEC show which means we are now on our way home so we're actually on our way to the charging point of Banbury again just to do a little top up so that we can make it all the way back because otherwise it's a little bit too far for us to come here and back again um, we might we might have been if we charged a bit more we might have been able to get back on this charge yeah, but I think we'd have been sat there a long time when, yeah. when you're charging an electric vehicle and it has to go up to 100% as, as you get close to 100% it just um, it slows the rate right down the charging rate right down so we would have been sat there for a while you, you're better off just doing quick bit splash and dash kind of thing as you if you want the quickest way to get from A to B with an electric car there's no point waiting until 100% so and the good thing is you know we have to stop anyway because we want to get some dinner we wanted to get some lunch earlier so there's no downside to this we would have had to stop anyway so we might as well put a bit of juice in the in the van whilst we do so so and you know 15 minutes stop here and there is really quite easy so yeah off we are to Banbury the show was good that video will already be out so make sure you check that out um, it'll be linked in the description below but yeah it's a, it's a good show there's some quite interesting things about but I didn't see a single ID buzz there amazingly I would have thought we'd seen one huh? But it's all right. not necessarily a camper van but you know just someone using it as a bit of a bit of advertising i don't know with a, a camper pull out thing at the back or an awning attached to it or something like that but i didn't see a single one there no but i think they are quite hard to get hold of maybe next year maybe this is a very important test here just checking that the um handle in the door of the vw buzz is uh good enough to hold your chips which it is so it wins well done well done. So this time we're getting five miles each minute, 111 kilowatts. So for some reason we're getting quite a bit more than we were earlier. It's because we've got a lower battery status at the minute. Oh! It'll charge faster the lower the battery is. Well there you go. And it'll start slowing down at around about 50%. There you go. That'd be why. So we're getting there with the charge. I've just put in the sat-nav our destination home, which is about 100 miles. Um, but it says here, so it's 123 miles of capacity left in the battery it's going up at four miles each minute in the in our Tesla I know I keep talking about the Tesla but that's all I've got to compare it to in the Tesla though it does say um, like three minutes and you can continue your journey it's now um, okay to continue your journey which I know that might sound obvious you got 100 miles to your destination or 125 miles is enough but the sat nav takes into account traffic um, whether you're going to be going faster or slower and all that kind of stuff so 125 miles leaving you only 25 miles of reserve is a bit tight so we'd probably give it a little bit longer um, because we don't know how busy it's going to be it'd be quite nice if the sat nav part of it spoke more to the charging part of it but it doesn't seem to in this it does say so if i show you in the navigation it shows you like a border of roughly where you could get to on the range. Don't know how I could get to that north, that part of Exeter, <laughs> and I don't know how I could get across to Wales. I don't understand that. I could even get to Ireland. Look. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> so that's where you can get to. Somehow you can jump from there to Haverford West, <laughs> <laughs> or even Dublin. Yeah, I don't really understand that. But um, yeah, so our home in Southampton is well within the border, but it just depends if, you, if you're gonna be doing 70, or even pushing it a little bit, doing 72, 73, all the way there, I reckon it'll deplete the battery a bit quicker than the, um, the expected range that we've got in here, so. Also, on another note, these Instavolt ones, if you just tap your card, they pre-authorize 30 pound so we pre-authorized 30 quid this morning because I tapped it and I've just tapped it again back so it's yeah it's actually taken 60 quid out of my account I know it will put money back in but that's um that's quite a lot to take out your account 
but yeah, like I say, we'll we'll put on the um, it, on the screen now how much it did actually cost for both charges. So over from us, there's some more charges. There's six there, Instavolt as well. And those ones are 125 kilowatt chargers. Whereas the ones that we're at, which are these here, that look quite a bit newer, they're 150 kilowatt. And they're the same prices, so if your car can take more, don't use those ones, come over here. Well, we've just arrived back home, quite a bit of driving today, but um, we charged up at Banbury on the way back. We knew we had 100 miles journey left to do we charged to 150 miles of range on the battery and in, interestingly as we um, got it got quite fast actually whereas we're going along the a34 um, doing about sort of 74 75 don't tell the police it's actually is an hour, you mean. <laughs> yeah yeah maybe um, but yeah it dropped to oh, I can't see Ta -da. Ta -da. Uh, it dropped to oh, so we had 50 miles buffer when we set off it dropped to about it expected that we we're going to only have 30 miles uh, buffer at the end of our journey but then i knew that we were about to hit a 50 limit the m3 is full of 50 mile an hour limit so and we've got back up we've arrived back with 42 miles so i think it's fairly accurate i think it's pretty good if you were belting along all the time at 75 or more then yeah you power through the battery really quickly but if you stick to the speed limit it's pretty accurate actually. So what do we think range wise? About 190, 200 miles? Yeah, range? yeah. In, it's about, uh, it's been between seven and eight degrees pretty much um, all day. So yeah, in winter with about seven or eight degrees, quite a bit of rain this morning, real mixed driving. It was mainly motorway on the way back, but tons of sort of A road driving um, and town driving on the way up. Yeah, I, th I think about 190, 200 miles. And it claims about 250, so. Yeah, I think we most people expect to knock off a fair percentage and that's probably about right but it's been a good day I need to charge up now so it'll spend quite a bit of time charging we're only at 19 percent battery and we'll charge it up overnight <laughs> the ID buzz has now gone back to VW we put a question out on all our social medias asking you to ask us any questions that you have about the ID Buzz. So let's answer a few of those now. So the first question is, is it a viable alternative to the Tesla as a daily driver? And absolutely, for those of you who don't know, we've got a Tesla Model 3 and it's a great daily driver, obviously. And the ID Buzz is just as good, if not better. It's got more space inside. It's really comfortable. Um, the range is plenty big enough for for daily driving. Most people's journeys are about 10 miles a day to work and back, so it's really not far. Um, so yeah, absolutely, it's a fantastic daily driver. Next question, uh, and this question came up quite a bit actually, and that is, are they really going to make a ID Buzz California? Um, I think most people are concerned about how uh, tight the vehicle is because it's fairly narrow inside compared to the actual T6 uh, T or T6.1 platform uh, which is more of a commercial vehicle platform and I agree it is pretty tight they have they said to us at the press launch that they will be building an ID Buzz California that will come uh, not for a few years now I think it's going to be in the later half of this decade so it'll be a little while but I seriously think it'd make a fantastic a California beach alternative I think if you had like a pop-out hob um, maybe even a pop-out sink somewhere at the back underneath or something like that I think that'd be great the actual rear portion of it the the uh, parcel shelf for want of a better word and if you fold down the rear seats is plenty big enough for two people to sleep on so that kind of California beach alternative I think is definitely viable now, whether you can fit a small double bed and a kitchen in it, I'm not so sure. Now, there's much cleverer converters out there that are working their magic and also um, 
VW, like I say, have confirmed that California will come. So I'm sure they can work out something, but it'd be really interesting to see what they do. Another question that came up a lot is what is the range? What are you getting on a full charge? Now you saw it earlier in the video, we did a long trip with mixed type of journey, uh, driving on A roads, a bit of B roads, driving in town and driving on the motorway. And we are, we and we are getting around about 190 to 200 miles, something like that. And that's in the back end of winter, so about six, seven, eight degrees uh, Celsius. But yeah, around about 190 to 200 miles. If you were driving it around town and A roads where you barely go above 50, then I would expect a bit more than that, maybe 210, 220. But um, yeah, that, that's not too far off the 250 mile claimed range, and that's generally what you expect with electric cars are usually about 20 or 30 miles less than what they claim the next question is would you consider buying one and absolutely yeah we think it's a fantastic vehicle um i would definitely order it with the standard wheels though the one that we had uh, this week was on the bigger wheels and it just makes the ride a little bit too firm in my opinion It'd be interesting to see once the modifiers get hold of them and start putting different suspension on, because we had big wheels on our California beach. We had 20 inch wheels on that, uh, but we had real fancy suspension, so it was fine. It wasn't an issue at all, but yeah, I found the ID Buzz to be a little bit too firm. But then again, that was 21 inch wheels, so <laughs> that is a really big wheel. And that leads me on to the next question, and that is, what size are the wheels and do they fit onto a transporter? Now, like I say, they're a 21 inch wheel on the one that we, we borrowed. And the, with regards to whether they fit on a transporter, they're actually the wrong fitment. A transporter is a five by 120, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, whereas on the ID Buzz, I think they're a five by 112. So you'd have to have some sort of adapter, a hub adapter uh, to make them fit. But there are people out there that do that, so I'm sure someone will make them fit. But I'm really excited to see what the ID Buzz looks like with some aftermarket wheels on and maybe a little bit lower with some trick suspension. So that'd be cool to see. Another question was, can you easily attach a roof rack or an awning to the ID Buzz? Now, I must admit, I didn't actually go up onto the roof to check. Um, on the side, most awnings have like an awning rail attachment that you attach uh, like a roll out awning a wind out awning to the side of that it's really slim between the top of the window and the the roof so there's not really enough room on an id buzz to to fit that in the gap but i'm not entirely sure whether there is any rails or anything like that i don't think there was any rails on the top i think it is more like just a normal roof but i'm sure there will be something around the corner because it it's a lifestyle vehicle people want to be able to take kayaks bikes anything like that on the roof don't they so i think it looked really cool with uh, like a front runner basket style roof rack on with i don't know maybe like an axe on the side a shovel and just so it looks really off-roady lifestyle-y a kind of gr off-grid kind of camper van so i think that would look really smart but uh, yeah we shall see if there's any way of attaching i'm sure there must be because uh, people are going to want to take their kids bikes with them so yeah, we'll, we'll see what it looks like in the future. Next question, how did you get on with the capacitive uh, touch controls on the steering wheel? For those of you who don't know, the ID Buzz has, and a lot of the ID products have, uh, capacitive touch buttons. So if the vehicle is turned off, it's just like flat piano black uh, panels. It doesn't look like there's any buttons there at all. Then using uh, tiny little like vibrating motors, when you press the actual button that's on the steering wheel, the volume or whatever, it then simulates a, a vibration. So it looks like you've actually pressed the button. It feels like you pressed the button. It's quite clever technology. It's used in iPhones and iPads and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's, I must admit that took a lot of getting used to. There's been a lot of negative feedback on those buttons and yeah, it's not great. I don't massively see the point. I think the, the point is um, they can just produce these panels the, the steering wheel comes as it is and it doesn't matter what is specified on the vehicle you basically just turn on and off the buttons as to whether it's been specced or not so i get that as a bit of a cost saving uh, measure but yeah like for example the cruise control if you press it a little bit it goes up in one mile an hour increments if you press it a bit hard it jumps in five mile an hour increments 
the amount of times like I turn the cruise control on and you want to do, maybe do 72, 73 just so it's a little not quite 70 um, and you press the button it jumps to 75 you're like oh no that's a bit too fast oh slow down oh uh, and yeah it jumps around quite a bit I'm sure if you used it a lot you might get used to it but yeah for me just give me a, a button I'd rather have a button so not ideal um, speaking of the actual button layout it's been well publicized that the infotainment system on the ID products has not been that great and I must admit I, I agree I wasn't that bothered at the VW press launch but for some reason it just became a bit more frustrating as we lived with the vehicle a bit more the temperature controls for the air conditioning it are just like sliding again capacitive touch uh, sliders which are not the easiest to use and they're not lit up at night time which was which is a very silly idea I, I don't know if they're trying to get you to use voice control more maybe but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm unlikely to do that because I just think that's pointless I want to just be able to press a button ideally even ignoring those capacitive buttons when you just want to do something like turn on the heated seats you press the heated seat button that's on the home screen and then that opens up the climate control and then you press the heated seat button in there I don't know why when the heated seat button is right there on the screen why you can't just press it and it turn it on I'm not sure but I, I think probably what the most important factor is if you owned one of these vehicles everything would be set up to your key and you would have your favorite setup in the vehicle and you probably just leave it and it'd be absolutely fine so I can't say I was massively sold it wouldn't be a deal breaker it, it it really would not stop me from buying the vehicle but it's just something to think about if you are thinking about buying one yourself so Colin from Yorkshire Pop Top Adventures hi Colin uh, he asked loads of questions loads of really good questions actually and he asked uh, what the difference is between the range uh, when it's fully loaded and when it's empty now I'm not entirely sure because we didn't go camping in it or anything like that we it was just me and Lizzie that went up all the way up to um, the NEC so I can't give you uh, a, a difference in that kind of discrepancy between when it's full and not I'm afraid but it's it's a blooming heavy vehicle all these electric vehicles are really heavy anyway so whether it massively is impacted I'm not sure but um, I do wonder as well because like I said earlier that the suspension is quite firm uh, especially when you've got the bigger wheels it has to be because it has to absorb the bumps for that all the weight of an electric vehicle I do wonder if it's a little bit like our California was that once it's fully loaded and you're going away camping so once you've got all your camping gear in uh, if you've got water tanks with you and things like that I, I do wonder whether it would actually drive better because certainly our California did it was so much nicer to drive when it was fully loaded it just kind of settled down and uh, yeah, it just felt like a much more plush ride so I do wonder whether the the ID Buzz would be pretty similar in that respect but I'm not entirely sure I'm afraid because we didn't test it he also asked uh, if there's any footage of a drag race between the crafter and the ID Buzz again I'm afraid not and it would be pretty pointless because I know for a fact that the ID Buzz would win it's quite a quick car the ID Buzz like all electric cars off the lights it just boom, goes there's no change of gear or anything like that by the time a petrol or diesel vehicle has um, sort of throttled up, engaged the clutch and gone, even if it's an automatic, the vehicle has to obviously engage a clutch, it, um, the electric vehicle's gone. If you look at the actual figures, 0-60 time, they're not that inspiring, but electric cars always feel so much quicker when you're actually driving. So, yeah, it's the 200 horsepower motor in the ID Buzz and there's faster ones coming there's a GTX model coming which is going to be like a GTI for electric vehicles so that's going to be really interesting to see but um yeah it's a, it's a quick little car and there's no way the crafter even with nothing in it would stand a chance unfortunately but that would be a blooming good video we should have done that and Colin also asks who's the vehicle aimed at and that's a really good question because I'm not entirely sure. I think it's aimed at people. It's trying to get people out of SUVs, I think. Which, um, if you compare the ID Buzz for practicality of just a people carrier compared to something like a Range Rover, the ID Buzz is hands down better. It really is. A Range Rover, you, you're paying for the ground clearance, the off-road capabilities, which nobody does. So the amount of space, the huge boot, 
I put a bit of um, I nipped a Wix to get some ply board for the crafter build and I put that in the boot it's a 1.2 meter long bit of ply and boom, straight in the boot no messing didn't have to put any seats down if I put the seats down I'd have been able to put an even bigger bit in it's a huge boot the only thing the only difference compared to um, a California or a camper variant of a, like a trans transporter where you often have a parcel shelf that forms part of the bed and the floor that gap is much bigger in a California than it is in an ID Buzz, which kind of renders the bit underneath a little bit useless, apart from for charging cables, but it's way too big for it to just be taken up with charging cables. I'd like to have seen it maybe maybe a little bit higher, a bit of a bigger gap, so you could at least maybe put a push chair, a pram underneath. Um, that, that's exactly what we used to do with our California, and that then freed up the top shelf for Bentley to just sit on and not be disturbed by anything sliding around in the boot so yeah maybe maybe that would be quite good to see yeah it's a really practical car I think it's aimed at families um, yeah like I say getting them out of their discoveries and uh, getting them out of their Range Rovers that kind of stuff but we'll just have to wait and see as to whether it's aimed at people that want to go camping because at the minute it's not a camper van so let's see Right, I think that's answered most of the questions that we had. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, what do you think to the ID Buzz? Has anyone got one on order? Is anyone interested in getting one? Are you now going to order one after seeing our video? Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. We've got loads more videos coming. Please consider subscribing because it really, really helps us out. Right, I've been gone with this crafter. Thanks for watching. Cheers.